Now that's an American badass right there. Salute that man. That is the fucking American badass Salute right that there. Man. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. Dude, the Kid Rock Cruise. I am so happy that nobody here is judgmental as all hell because I would have been thrown off probably last night or the day before. No, Bob asked me to come out here and just uh, say a few words. So if you don't mind, I'll tell you a pretty cool story. Um, I'm not able to get into tactics at all because it's the whole secret shit or whatever. Uh, but I'm gonna—I'll tell you some stuff that led up to it. I was—I um, was a Navy SEAL for uh, almost 17 years. And actually, I, I got there by accident. Because, you know, people always, like, why'd you become a Navy SEAL? My, my thing was I had a girlfriend that dumped me when I was 19, and I wanted to get out of town. And uh, I was from, I'm from Butte, Montana, and the easiest way to get out of Butte, Montana, I heard Shoto's out there somewhere, nice. The easiest way to get out of Montana is to join the military. And uh, I had uh, two friends growing up with me. I never wanted to be in the military. They always wanted to be U.S. Marines. They were two years older than me, and uh, when I got into my junior year of high school, they left and became Marines, and when they came back, they looked like Marines. Fit, confident, just badass, right? So when I went to join, I was like, I want to be like them, so I went to the recruiting station, and I learned very early on it's better to be lucky than good, because as luck would have it, the Marine recruiter was not in the office, but the, the Navy guy was. So I went over there because my two Marine friends, Ben and Jim, told me that I didn't know this, and many of you may not know this, the Marine Corps is actually part of the Department of the Navy. Yeah. It's yep. just a men's department. Yeah. <laughs> so, I went in. <laughs> so I went in there, and I'm like, hey, man, where's the Marine? He said, why do you want the Marine? I said, I want to be a sniper. Marines have the best snipers in the world. He said, look no further. We have snipers in the Navy. All you need to do is become a Navy SEAL. I had no idea what that was. I didn't even know how to swim. But I'm like, you know what, this guy's a professional recruiter. Why is he going to lie to me? <laughs> yeah, so that happened. Uh, anyway, so I, was, I uh, went to SEAL training. Um, went to SEAL Team 2. And I found out a place called SEAL Team 6. Uh, just, again, out of luck, I got there. Um, and I was fortunate enough, again, you know, it's, it's better to be lucky than good, but the harder you work, the luckier you're going to get. Yeah. yeah. So I found myself in weird places. Uh, my team actually rescued Marcus Luttrell, the lone survivor. Uh, I, was, I was called out of my daughter's classroom on my birthday, April 10th, 2009, on Good Friday. And then on Easter, we uh, rescued Captain Richard Phillips. Yeah! Nice. Some amazing shots from our snipers. And then I was even on the base when Bo Bergdahl walked off. So just the, weird, the weirdest place in the world. But uh, what we could do... What we would do is we would go to war for four months, be off for four months, go to war for four months. And uh, one of these times we were at home in, uh, in Virginia Beach. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We, we, uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, we were, in, uh, we were in Miami for a dive trip because I think it's always fun to take people on fun trips. And so we're down there and they called a bunch of us back. And so we went back to Virginia Beach and they said, here's how it all started. They said, hey, we found a thing and this thing is in a house. And this house is in a bowl between these mountains and this bowl's in a country. And you guys are going to go in and get this thing and bring it back to us. So we're like, cool, what's, uh, what's the thing? Well, we can't tell you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> where's the bowl? Can't tell you. What country? Can't tell you. How are we getting there? Can't tell you. How much air support do we have? That's an old nun. I'm like, oh, good. At least that's a fucking answer. <laughs> so, so we're kind of standing around. We're getting our gear ready. This is April of two uh, 2011, we're assuming it's Gaddafi because the Arab Spring just started happening. So we're training to go into Libya to get Gaddafi and bring him back. And, and uh, we come back on Friday and they said, okay, here's the deal. Go home for a day and a half, hang out with your kids. And on Sunday, we're going to drive somewhere and we're going to read you in on what's going on. So I was like, okay, what's the th uh, who's going to be there? They said, well, the vice president, the secretary of defense, secretary, it's like, Jesus Christ, what is this? And they're going down the list, and they set a, a CTC pad, and then this and that, and, and I was the only one that caught it. CTC pad is the uh, counter-terror desk pack Afghan. So I went home, and after many scotches, ah, yeah. I came back in on Sunday. We're all driving together. We split up like four dudes in a different vans. We're driving to this brief, and I'm, I'm sitting with my boss next to me. My buddies are up there, and I, I said, I'll tell you what, man. CTC pad's there. They, they found Bin Laden. 
my boss looked at me and he goes, that's exactly what I was thinking. So he and I are back there talking about it. The guy driving the vehicle looks at me in the rearview mirror and says, man, O'Neal, if we kill Osama bin Laden, I will suck your dick. <laughs> So, oh, too funny. so three weeks to the day, we're standing over his body, and I'm like, hey, homie, now's as good a time as any. And he's like, man of his word. He's a man of his word. So right away, we, uh, we, we trained up on some stuff. We're getting ready to go. And actually, they came in a room and said, all right, here's the deal. The reason you're here is because this is the closest if we've ever been to Osama bin Laden. So we trained on the mission. We did a couple things. We launched over to Afghanistan. I can't get into tactics at all. I'll just tell you some of the funnier parts of the story. Uh, so we're getting ready to launch, and I'm talking to one of my guys. And uh, I said, you guys realize this is a one-way mission, right? Like, we're not coming back. <laughs> like this, we're, we're, and one of my buddies said, well, why are, we, why are we doing it then? I said, I'll tell you what, we're not doing it for fame. We're not doing it for bravado. We're going on this mission to die for the single mom that dropped her kids off. Yep. Yeah. In New York City on a Tuesday morning, and an hour later, she jumped to her death because it's better than burning alive. And her last gesture of human decency was holding her skirt down so no one could see her underwear. That's why we're fucking going. Let's go kill this man. And we all accepted it. So they gave us one more day at home before we went over there. And I'm hanging up. Like, I was writing the letters to my kids, my, uh, my daughters. Um, one of my daughters was seven years old. I was writing a letter to the 27-year-old. Uh, sorry that I missed your wedding and thanks for taking care of your mom and your sister and like tears hitting the page And then I went shopping I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. Uh, And I don't know when you buy a seven-year-old and a four-year-old uh, mm. When you're gonna die, but I'm leaving the mall with this stuff and as I'm walking out all distressed There's a sunglasses hut And I look down and there's a, a pair of Prada sunglasses for $240 <laughs> And I'm like, you know what? I'm a chief in the Navy. I'm an E7. I cannot afford these. But I'm going to be dead next week in American Express can. <laughs> so then uh, a couple days later, well, I'm deciding. I'm like, you know, in the, there's never a perfect plan. In the unlikely event that we live through this mission and the next day, like me to steal a car in Abbottabad, Pakistan and drive it to the embassy in Islamabad, the sun's going to be out. I'm going to need sunglasses. So I carried Prada sunglasses in my pocket into Osama Bin Laden's bedroom. Now, I didn't realize it at the time because I had a lot of shit going on. But we got back and I'm like cleaning up and I reached down and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Then I started thinking, you know, I'm not going to be in the Navy forever. I'm a SEAL now and I'm not good at marketing, but this might work. A billboard with a Navy SEAL, all his cool guy shit on, a gun, and a pair of sunglasses. And all it says is, if you only have one day left to live, you might as well wear Prada. Yeah! <laughs> so anyway, so, uh, so we get to Jalalabad, we're going to launch, we take off, we're flying the helicopters, and we've got a 90-minute flight to get there. We cross the border of Pakistan, they can shoot us down now for any any reason, we can't even be mad because we're invading their country. So guys were doing stuff to take their minds off of what's happening. Uh, some guys fell asleep, if you can believe that. Some guys put in their, oh, by the way, we listened to American Badass before we went. And I'm being serious. So we're in this helicopter and I'm sitting on one of those uh, folding chairs, the dog Cairo, that famous dog Cairo sitting right here. And what I was doing to pass the time was counting, because I learned as a sniper, uh, just count to a thousand and then a thousand to zero. And zero to a thousand, thousand to zero. So we're counting in there, 80 minutes in, we turn to the right, we're on our attack run, and I'm not making this up, and I have a tattoo to prove it. As I'm counting, I'm like 556, 557, 558. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward, and freedom will be defended. Yeah! Yeah! And then I was like, fuck count. I'm going to keep saying that. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward, and freedom will be defended. We bank one more time to the right. We open the door two minutes out, and now it's not a training site. There's, like, lights and a golf course, and we're in Pakistan, and I'm like, man, we were about to do some serious fucking
fucking Navy SEAL shit. Let's do this. <laughs> so we get down there. Uh, one of the helicopters came in. It was supposed to fast stroke. We were on the outside. We're going to drop some guys off and then go to the roof. But all of a sudden, our helicopter went up, came back down. And we heard that the uh, helicopter was doing a racetrack. We heard racetrack, racetrack. So we assume they took fire and they're going to put us out. So we didn't know it crashed. The pilot did. We, he put us out there. We go outside. There's a door on the northeast corner. My breacher puts a charge up, blasts it. And behind the, uh, the door is a brick wall. And so he looked at me and goes, fail breach. This is bad. And I said, no, this is good. That's a fake door. He's in there. Come on. So we're starting to go into the, par the carport, which is another big door with a long driveway. And I announced to the other team, hey, we're going to blast this door, just whatever. And they said, well, no, don't blast it. We'll just open it. So the door opens and a thumb comes out. And I'm like, okay, I don't give a shit how you got in there. You're in there. I'll ask you later. So we go in. And I'm looking up at Osama Bin Laden's house, and I'm like, wow, this is fucking cool. It's Bin Laden's house. I'm going to die today, but I'm going to relish this. So we go in the hallway, a long hallway. We step into a room, and the guy next to me was on the helicopter that crashed. He started whispering something, something, helicopter crashed. So I went, well, which, which helicopter crashed? And I'm thinking some of the other ones that are supporting us. He goes, bro, our helicopter crashed in the front yard. You walk right past it. <laughs> So I'm like, well, shit, now we're never getting out of here. <laughs> As we're doing this, one of our snipers was running around the place with a dog, the entire compound, and he came to a point where the, uh, the tail was coming over a fence. He came over the radio, he was on my helicopter, and he goes, everybody be alert, they're ready for us. They've got a mock-up of our super secret helicopter in the front yard. <laughs> and then someone came over the radio and said, well, no, dummy, that's ours, we crashed. <laughs> And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes a lot more sense than the stupid shit I was just saying. Now, carry on. <laughs> so we get in there, and there was cool shit going on there with, um, like, there were little kids, uh, like, in different rooms and corners crying. And I was watching these guys, my guys, we're, we're getting ready to kill Bin Laden. Guys were grabbing little girls and running them through gunfire to different women to make sure they weren't afraid. And I'm like, you know what? We are the fucking good guys. That yeah. We don't do this. Yeah. So we start going up the stairs. They breach the door. We're walking up the stairs. And I'm like eight guys back. We go up these stairs. The stairs went up this way and then that way. And there's a banister. Oh, by the way, there was this kick-ass CIA chick that found him. Have you ever seen Zero Dark Thirty? Yeah. She's exactly like that, by the way. And hot as fuck. So... So we're going up the stairs, and she told us that when we get to the stairs, you're going to run into Khalid bin Laden. And when you see him, that's the last line of defense. So we're going up the stairs. I'm eight guys back, and normally I should have pulled guys back because he's going to throw a grenade or whatever. But I'm like, you know what? We're going to die anyway. i got to see what goes down. So the point man's up front. It's all dark. It's all quiet. And he said, Khalid, where's my idea? Khalid, Delta Russia. So he's saying, come here, come here, in two different languages. So Khalid pops his head over and goes, what? Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And then I was like, you know, I hope I live through tonight because I got to tell this fucking story on the Kid Rock Cruise. <laughs> so we keep going up the stairs. He's the number one man. Everyone else splits off. I turn into the two man. And what my job is the two man is to hold his shoulder. He's looking forward. His gun never looks back. I'm his, his eyes in the back of his head. And I'm waiting for at least four more guys, but nobody's coming. And all of a sudden, he started talking. He didn't know it was me. He didn't know it was one of his guys. And he goes, hey, man, we got to get up there. Hey, man, we got to go. Because he's looking through a curtain, and people are moving, so he's assuming suicide bombers. And finally, he goes, hey, man, these bitches is getting truculent. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think that word means what you think it means. And, and then it was that point where you know we're going to die in that room. And I'm like, let's just get it over with. This is not being brave. I'm like, I'm tired of worrying about blowing up. So I squeeze him. We go up the stairs. He opened the curtain and jumped on these two women that he assumed had vests. So he took his own life to absorb the blast so the guy behind him can get the shot. He still deserves a Medal of Honor, and I hope he gets it. <laughs> so I turn to the right, and a foot and a half in front of me is Osama Bin Laden. So I see him. like, And then the woman jumps on me. I push her on the bed. His two-year-old son is standing right here, so I picked him up, and I remember thinking he had nothing to do with this. So I picked him up, I put him on the bed, another seal started rolling in the room, and that's kind of when I froze. And I'm standing there, one of my buddies comes up to me and says, hey man, you good? And I said, uh, what do we do now? 
And he said, now we go find the computers, remember? And I said, yeah, I'm back. Holy shit. And he goes, yeah, you just killed Bin Laden, man. Your life just changed. <laughs> So we go find all of our stuff and we have to leave. We get the helicopters. But another helicopter came in to rescue us, full of SEAL Team 6 guys. So we, uh, we get in the helicopter. I'm sitting next to a SEAL. So we were Red Squadron. This is Blue Squadron. There's a Blue Squadron SEAL Team 6 guy. And, and I was lucky because every single day I was able to go to a, a place and work with people who were better than me. Uh, they're so good. So he's sitting there and he, and he asked the same question everyone asked. He said, who killed him? He's from Manhattan. I said, I think I did. And he said, on behalf of my family, thank you. Yeah. So, now, so now we're flying out. Yeah. This is the best part. Let me better than so now we're flying back on a mission where we're supposed to die. And we've got 90 minutes to live. 90 minutes will get me 70 more years of life. And we're flying. And nobody wants to say a word. But it's like, okay, it's been 10 minutes. It's been 20 minutes. 30 minutes. And we're all looking around like watching a pitcher throw a perfect game. But you don't want to say anything. You don't want to jinx it. 40 minutes. 50 minutes. And then it turns into like the 1980s hockey game where the Americans beat the Russians. No! Counting it down. So we're 85 minutes into it. And all of a sudden, the pilot comes over the radio and said, All right, gentlemen, for the first time in your lives, you're going to be happy to hear this. Welcome to Afghanistan. Yeah. Yeah. One more. So we get back. We get back, we land. Bin Laden's body's laying there. I walk into the point man who I hadn't seen since the gunfight. And he said, Hey, um, there's the girl. You need to give her something because you killed Osama bin Laden. So her entire life was trying to find him, so I walked over, I took the magazine out of my gun, and I said, hey, uh, you want, do you have room in your backpack for this? And she's like, yeah, I do. And then I said, all right, come here, I gotta show you something. Now, in the movie Zero Dark Thirty, she saw Bin Laden's body and cried. Not at all what happened. This is the toughest person in the world. So I walk her over, and something historic, and I said, is that your guy? And she looked at me and goes, well, I guess I am out of a fucking job. <laughs> Then, here's my last story. So, so we get home and I'm hanging out with my kids and I don't know how to explain it. And Bin Laden's face is all over the news. Fox News, by the way. Watch Fox yeah! News. Yeah! And we're sitting there and, and she said, Daddy, that's Osama Bin Laden. I said, no, don't you ever say that name again. That name is cursed. Don't be associated with it. And she didn't understand. Because she's seven, getting yelled at. And finally she goes, Daddy, look, it's um, Poopy Face. <laughs> and then she said... By the way, how tall was he? And I said, oh baby, he was like, like that tall. <laughs> it's funny because I'm pointing a gun at him. Anyway. <laughs> and hey, thanks so much. Great fan base. Hey, um. Thank you. No, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, I, I, I told Tim Montana I would plug him. He's touring with ZZ Top. So Tim, there's your plug. Don't forget everyone else. Tone Low, Pete Skull, Bell Band, everybody. Awesome job. Thanks so much for having us. Uh, we'll see you around the ship.